This is the Chris DeGall Show podcast. Okay, guys, let's just rip. And Chris DeGall. Chris DeGall. Chris, thanks for being with me tonight. Chris uh, DeGall. I'm joined now by Chris DeGall. Now. He puts the broad in broadband. It's Chris DeGaulle. The Chris DeGaulle Podcast is presented by USMedicalPlan.com. Save big money monthly and get better health coverage at USMedicalPlan.com. Well, welcome in. It's Monday. It's the 20th day of March. I thank you so much for downloading the Chris DeGaulle Show Podcast. It's uh, a, a day that I know a lot of people are on edge, particularly if you're a Republican, specifically if you're a Trump supporter. And we're going to get into the specifics of it. Donald Trump tomorrow, they say, could be arrested. What does that mean? Matthew Whitaker, former acting attorney general of the United States, uh, was able to spend some time with me this morning to explain just exactly what it means, what he thinks will come of it, if anything, and uh, what that could look like. I'm still not there yet. Uh, I'm not denying that there are people angling for Trump. I just, um, I don't know. We'll, anyway, I'll discuss it in more detail coming up in just a minute. Also, a cultural revolution is afoot. I really do believe that we are living through some transformational times uh, that, yes, are terribly negative, frustrating, maybe scary uh, for some of you, but I also um, have a tremendous amount of optimism uh, and a belief that there are a lot of people who are coming back home to traditional cultural values, and I'll explain my point on that in today's show as well. But first, let me tell you about the guy that makes the show possible every day. And I don't want you to, don't fast forward through this, health insurance. Everybody's trying to save money right now. And I'm just telling you that if you're trying to save money and you buy your own health insurance premiums, oh my gosh, you got to meet John Ruhlman and the team at usmedicalplan.com. Go there today. My friend Angela recently reached out to usmedicalplan.com for a young woman Uh, because they were really at their wits end with finances and other things. And I was so heartened to hear that Angela, in talking with um, a colleague at usmedicalplan.com who works with John Ruhlman, she said to Angela, listen, this young lady that you're trying to help, she has two mamas now. That's the kind of personal commitment. Uh, These people view you at usmedicalplan.com like family. They're advocates for you. So if you're in some bureaucratic hell over health insurance right now and you're trying to navigate it, trying to get a bill paid or whatever, let usmedicalplan.com, the team uh, John Ruhlman has assembled there and their care department help you. Let them shop their 80 different private insurers to get you a cheaper rate. If you buy insurance for your small business, if you buy insurance for your family, uh, if you just self-insure, or maybe you're paying for insurance through work and you're like, gosh, this is a huge expense every month, you could save 30 to 60% with a phone call. Hundreds, maybe thousands of dollars a month you could save with one phone call. Give it two minutes. Call 877-410-4321. 877-410-4321 or usmedicalplan.com. And remember, look for my face at usmedicalplan.com. If you don't see my smiling mug, it's not the right website. usmedicalplan.com. Let's get right to it. I know what everybody's thinking about. I know what's on your mind today. There's only one thing, and that is everybody is waiting breathlessly to see if Donald Trump is going to get frog marched out of Mar-a-Lago and thrown in the back of a paddy way. Do you think that's the way this is going to go down, Fast Eddie? You think they're going to storm into Mar-a-Lago and chain up his wrists and ankles, and we're going to see a big visual of Trump shuffling in shackles into the back of a paddy wagon? After how these past few years have been, sure, I absolutely think that's going to happen. <laughs> now, here's another question: Do you think if that's if that were to happen, is that what Trump wants? Do you think the Trump people want the visual of him being cuffed and detained, or not? Oh, that's a tough one because I know he's big on optics; like he understands it. I, I, I can't tell you, Chris. I'm sorry. I'm not sure. Is that to Trump's benefit to see him shot? Now, listen, the American left has been salivating. They've been dreaming of the day that Donald Trump would be physically in cuffs. They want to see that. Do you think they're going to get that? That's now Trump said on Truth Social over the weekend that he was uh, I'm not folks, I'm not laughing at this. Don't misunderstand. I'm not making light of it. It's actually deadly serious and disgusting. But Trump said that he's facing arrest tomorrow. And we're going to be all over some of the legal specifics of this coming up with our friend, former uh, acting attorney general of these United States, Matthew Whitaker. We're glad was able to join us this morning to kind of break this down. But 
Trump has, I guess the Trump team has sort of walked back what Trump initially put out on Truth Social over the weekend, that he's going to be arrested on Tuesday. Meanwhile, other Republicans like Kevin McCarthy are trying to tamp down what was kind of his initial reaction when he said, go out and protest. Um, Here's what McCarthy had to say about this protesting issue over the weekend. This is the type of thing America hates and divides us and is wrong. Yes, ma'am. I don't think people should protest this, no. And I, I, I think President Trump, if you talk to him, he doesn't believe that either. I mean, I think, I think the thing that you may misinterpret when, the, when President Trump talks, when someone says that they can protest, he would probably be referring to my tweet, educate people about what's going on. He's not talking in a harmful way, and nobody should. Nobody should harm one another in this. And this is why you should really make law equal. Because if that was the case, nothing would happen here. And that is what has to transpire. Yes, ma'am. Have I spoken to who? Uh, no, I have not spoken to Trump. But you, earlier in the question you, you referred to, I have spoken to Jim Jordan. And, uh, and those are the appropriate committees. Remember, we also have a so, select committee um, on the weaponization of government. This applies directly to that. I think you'll see actions from them. Yes. Well, it determines what, what you think that means in that. I think what when you're referring to President Trump, I believe what he's probably referring to is make sure law is equal. He's not saying something negative in the stance, and nobody, let me be very clear, no matter what transpires, and this doesn't mean this is going to happen, but if was this to happen, we want calmness out there. Nobody... Nobody per violence or harm to anything else. But what we're really saying here in this whole process is we need equal justice in America. And no one believes. Do you believe this is equal justice? Are you proud of what the Manhattan DA is doing? Do you think it's legally right? Well, well what do you think about what people have said about the Statue of Limitations that this is gone? What do you think about when people say on both sides of the aisle that this is just what the Manhattan DA is doing is actually harming America? Do you think it's right what he's doing? I know, but you get asked questions, do I? I haven't been able to hear the president's rhetoric. I thought I'd been clear on mine. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay, Which so you get it. You? you get it. Uh, this, here's the thing. The media wants to make this, of course, about Trump's response to it and our response to it. We, you're not allowed to be outraged by it. Trump's not allowed to be outraged by it. We're all supposed to sit down and shut up, and you're not supposed to be mad. But in fact, releasing this, leaking this is designed exactly to do just that. It's to make you mad. Folks, the reason we know this, the reason Trump knows this, the reason this was a news story over the weekend, the reason so many of you are lamenting it this morning is on purpose. They, they want the buildup. They, if this were truly a legitimate matter of law, you and I would have no idea this were about to happen. They want to give you run up and they want to give this lead time. They want this chaos. They want the response. This works on many fronts, ladies and gentlemen, and it really kind of depends on who you listen to as to who benefits here most. Does this satiate the bloodlust Democrats have to maybe see Trump in cuffs? Sure. But we've been through this twice with impeachment alone. So how this benefits or you know, entertains or delights or satisfies the left is the least of my concerns or interests and yours too. I understand. Now, what does this mean for those of us who are either Trump supporters or Republican voters or or what have you? Well, this serves as a tremendous cudgel and I saw it all weekend long. I heard it from personal friends. You see, if Trump were a little more disciplined, you see, if Trump hadn't uh, diddled a porn star. You see, if Trump hadn't, you see, if Trump had just, well, you know, this is really kind of Trump. Trump brought this on himself. And it's funny because people who are saying, well, if Trump hadn't been such a this and such in his day, we wouldn't be here today. And I think to myself, well, that's kind of amazing because six years ago, (laughs) when we were litigating this stuff the first time, The electorate managed to find its way past it and elect him anyway. So we've already litigated this as a kind of a morality thing. So for people that are saying, well, you know, his past picadillos and I mean, I'm sorry, like we're relitigating the past. We've all been here. We all know what the story is like. No one's surprised by it. No one should be surprised by it. Now, then 
as a matter of legal or illegal. Um, this has been litigated. It's been adjudicated. Cohen, the fixer, has already been completely discredited and jailed himself for his lies. Nobody in this story is credible. Of course, yes, this is a Soros-backed hack DA who leaked a story probably on behalf of Democrats and Biden because look at what's really going on around us. Look at... From an I, I, I'm sorry to sound like a rude, <laughs> an open border, banks collapsing, Chinese spy balloons, China apparently funding and weaponizing Russia. I mean, the bank collapse thing is not a small thing, right? That's not a small matter, and that off the pages now. We're not even talking about that anymore. As for Republicans, the division will continue. There are Republicans who want to move off of Trump. Time to move on. Time to move on. They've been saying that for a while, and this is just proof positive that that's more the case. And yet there are others who are diehard Trump and are more diehard Trump than ever before. And there is the possibility that if Trump were to be seen physically arrested, that, you know, and pick your word, some people use the word martyr, whatever you want to call that, that will galvanize the support. And I warned this over the weekend. For people that are flippant and glib about this <laughs> on the Republican side, those of you who you know, feel like, well, you know, let's let's leave him by the roadside or we're moving on or, well, this is what he gets or you see this is why we got to move on to DeSantis or whatever. I'm just warning you. I hear you. I get it. I respect your position. And you don't understand what you're talking about. I love you. I did, listen to me. Don't get mad at me. Don't shoot the messenger. Don't get mad at me because I tell you the truth. I'm telling you the truth. If you think that if, in fact, Donald Trump is arrested tomorrow, and I'm still not even sure I believe this, but and like I said, even Trump's team's kind of walking it back. I think this was done for your consumption and for mine. It was done for the consumption, the bloodlust of the left. It was done for the division on the right. It kind of serves multiple fronts. It certainly distracts. I don't know how much of it's actually real. If this were truly a legal matter, I, again, I say, I don't think you and I would even know about it. I think it would be done quietly and swiftly if it were truly about the law, which, of course, it's not. So does it divide Republicans? Yes, it does. Because there, it, it drives the stake even further in between the Republican voter who says, oh, well, you see, this is just yet another... Two indictments, January 6th, now this, we just can't weather this. He, we got we to gotta move on. This is just too big a distraction. He's too big a problem. We got to move on. And I say, again, I respect you. I appreciate that point of view. I even understand why it's logical to some degree. And I can't stress to you how wrongheaded it is. Because what you don't, what, what a lot of you may not understand a lot of you do, and a lot of you may not. And I say it with respect. I'm not saying it to be condescending. I just don't think that you understand the level of belief and trust people have in Trump and only Trump being their voice in the Republican Party, in any party, in politics, period. If you don't I know this sounds almost obvious and boring and tired to some people, but I don't think it's really in the marrow of some of you like it is in others. And that is, there's only one guy who truly means it when he says he's going to go to Washington, D.C. and drain the swamp and break the China, literally and metaphorically. There's only one man. None of the rest of them can be trusted. We have now reached uniparty status, and there's not a Republican or a Democrat I trust. There's only one man who has reached great heights and taken on Washington and done so successfully and made a difference in our lives as Americans and defended. I, listen, I talked to a guy, a very a guy I respect deeply yesterday, deeply religious guy, okay? Deeply spiritual Christian. Not even really a Trumper. His wife is. In fact, he even said to me, because he asked me about my trip to Mar-a-Lago. He said, how was that? I said, yeah, pretty cool. I shared with him a couple of stories. He said, you know, my wife thinks he walks on water and kind of rolled his eyes at me a little bit. 
He said, I'm, you know, he, he told me about how he um, was such an admirer of George W. Bush uh, and how he believed he was a man of conviction, great faith and blah, blah, blah. And he said, you know, I'm not as excited about Trump as my wife. However, then he jumped in and he said, but I have to admit, I really appreciate what he did for people of faith, what he did for Israel. And that was the moment that I said to myself, it just, not that this is a new or profound thought, but as he said that, I walked out of church and I got in my car and I said, and that's it. That's the thing. What, what people like this man don't understand about people like his wife, if, if I may say respectfully, is people feel that Trump in their bones made the country better. And they feel he really loves the country and defends the country, defends people of faith and has a record proving so. I do, too. I believe Trump has a real substantive record that backs him up. And the mistake that I think a lot of people make is they think this is a cult of personality thing. They think that the people that feel this deep in their soul about Donald Trump, it's like a Jim Jones thing, like we're going to drink some punch together and, you know, catch a rocket ship to death. That, that's not, it's not what it is. Trump has a, he has demonstrated a connectivity and a willingness to fight for the American people that no one in American politics in recent memory has ever displayed. That trip to East Palestine just a couple of weeks ago, as I told you, was a tour de force. No one in politics could do what he did. I told you that then. It didn't matter who went after. No one could do what he did. Buying McDonald's for all the first responders, for heaven's sake. I mean, it, it was classic populist Trump. People love this man. They believe he loves the country. And that's why they love him. And he has a substantive resume to back it up not just rhetoric he did the stuff people remember times that a wall was being built a border was being secured laws were being upheld they remember more money in their pocket they remember global security we weren't in wars we weren't about to go to war we remember these things we remember him talking about making america great Yes, he was a nationalist, proudly so, and so are most Americans. We're proud of this country. We love it, and we want to protect it and preserve it. And the people who believe Donald Trump shares that point of view believe he's the only guy that shares that point of view in his core. And as such, this is why people will never break with him. You cannot separate the people who believe in their core this about him. You cannot drive them away. You can't drive them away even if you handcuff him and throw him in the back of the paddy wagon for everyone to see on cable news tomorrow. Those people are not going away. Now, I don't know what you want to make of that. If you're a Republican who says, I'm just tired of all this drama. He can't win. He's hated. He's hated. I stipulate it. Again, I say stipulated. I am not making the case that I think Donald Trump's arrest tomorrow, if that actually happens, is going to win him an election in the general. Now, there are some people who have said that to me. Some people believe that if Donald Trump's arrested tomorrow, that is going to ignite the country in a rage of injustice that will propel him to the White House. I'm not prepared to go that far. I am prepared to say that if something like that actually happens, Donald Trump probably will be the nominee, and there's probably little anybody can do to stop it. Not going to predict that that's absolutely, because there's a long time between now and the Republican nomination, so I'm not declaring that as fact, and I know for sure it's going to happen. Lots can happen in between now and then. Trump could decide he doesn't want to run. I mean, I you can't know. You don't know who else is going to get in. You don't know who else is going to get in trouble. You don't know who's going to die. Like, I mean, there's just a, a ton of unknowables. So no, not making any prediction here. But I'm saying his support will not wane. It will only galvanize. People are not going to go, oh, well, I guess if Trump's in, hand, in handcuffs, I guess uh, maybe it's time to look elsewhere. Ain't happening. And Trump's people count on that. In fact, they're kind of brilliantly now 
demanding the rest of the Republican field stand with him. It's a masterstroke, actually. They know he's not going to prison. I don't think they actually think he's going to be arrested. I can't prove that, but I mean, the team has already kind of backed off it. I think this is Trump actually kind of brilliantly saying, okay, who amongst you thinks this is just? Who amongst you, Republicans, thinks this is fair? You going to stand with me or you going to stay quiet? Did you notice all the weekend, all the Trumpers who were demanding that people speak up on this thing? Where are you, DeSantis? Where are you, Haley? Where are you, Pence? What do you have to say about me about to be arrested? Was effectively what Team Trump was saying. Pretty genius, actually. And Democrats want it. Now listen, here's the other truth. Democrats know this is exactly what this will elicit. An internecine battle inside the Republican ranks. A fueling of rage over the injustice amongst Trump's base. And I do think if they could get themselves another full-blown January 6th style event out of it, they'd love it. Do I think they'd love nothing more than to see the streets roiling and burning? They could point, you see, you see what they do? You see those people? They're nuts. So listen, I stipulate and I hear all of you who say this is just more problem, this is more assurance that Trump can't win the general. I hear you. But we got to get to a Republican primary first, and I'm not talking about the general election. I'm not talking about Trump versus Biden. By the way, I hear those of you saying, nope, Stigall, it's Trump by a route if it's Trump versus Biden. I appreciate your confidence. I'm not there yet, and it has nothing to do with Trump. My hesitance there is with the GOP writ large. I don't know that we've figured out ballot collection yet. So that's another thing. Lots can be true at once here, folks. I'm trying to give you a 30,000-foot view. I'm not trying to tell any one group of people what they want to hear. There's a lot of spinning plates here, and there are a lot of disparate interests. Lots can be true at one time. Not making any predictions, just painting pictures, okay? So don't get mad at me. As for Trump himself, here's what he said on Truth Social. Our nation is now third world and dying. The American dream is dead. The radical left anarchists have stolen our presidential election and with it, the heart of our country. American patriots are being arrested and held in captivity like animals. While criminals and leftist thugs are allowed to roam the streets, killing and burning with no retribution. Millions are flooding through our open borders. Many from prisons and mental institutions. Crime and inflation are destroying our, va- are destroying our very way of life. Now illegal leaks from a corrupt and highly political Manhattan DA's office which has allowed new records to be set in violent crime and whose leader is funded by George Soros, indicate that with no crime being able to be proven and based on an old and fully debunked fairy tale, the far and away leading Republican candidate and former president of the United States of America will be arrested on Tuesday of next week. Then he says, protest, take our nation back. Uh, A little later in the weekend. He says, it's time. We're a nation in steep decline, being led into World War III by a crooked politician who doesn't even know he's alive, but who is surrounded by evil and sinister people who, based on their actions on defunding the police, destroying our military, open borders, no voter ID, inflation, raising taxes, and much more, can only hate our now failing USA. We just can't allow this anymore. They're killing our nation as we sit back and watch. We must save America. Protest protest, protest. And he had a few more posts. Now, (laughs) what's really going on? Well, what's really going on is even over at CNN, people like Aaron Burnett, CNN anchor Aaron Burnett admitted evidence revealing the Biden family received over a million dollars from accounts linked to Hunter Biden's Chinese business dealings does not look good for the Biden family. On her program Out in Front, Aaron Burnett on CNN discussing financial records revealing members of the Biden family taking payment from China. Burnett asked her guest, Ryan Goodman, co-editor-in-chief of Just Security, about the revelations. She admitted to him they don't look good. Goodman responded, saying that while nothing damaging legally is likely to be found, they may be possibly unethical. (laughs) 
Right. And then, of course, there's Admiral Rachel Levine, who's neither an admiral nor a Rachel, who was altogether very proud in telling you, hey, sure, uh, in due course, it's going to be very, very normal to mutilate your children. I think that as we look to all the different elections in 2024, um, I think the next two years are going to be challenging. But I am positive and optimistic and hopeful that the wheel will turn after that um, and that uh, this issue won't be as uh, politically and socially such a minefield. Right. Um, In the meantime, I can say that the, the children that you serve the, and the young people that you serve, their families and you all as their providers have support at the highest levels of the federal government. President Biden supports you, and he has articulated that support for the children and families on a, uh, frequently. There are no guardrails on Democrats, folks. There are no guardrails. There are no laws. And I hear those of you, and I totally understand and respect those of you that are shouting, but Bill Clinton paid off Paula Jones 850 grand. Yes. Hillary kept an on off the grid server. Hillary smashed and broke evidence. Hillary had to pay a fine because she illegally paid for a phony dossier to try to frame Trump. Yeah, stipulated, all true. Yes, I know. Two-tiered system of justice. Got it, Roger. You know that and so do I. Of course. There are no guardrails on Democrats. They are lawless political creatures. They stop at nothing to control anyone who stands in their way. I mean, there was a guy on CNN. They're electing stroke victims, folks. There's a guy on CNN yesterday who said John Fetterman is probably in such bad shape he was either suicidal or literally couldn't function, which is why he was admitted to the hospital. That was a professional medical doctor on CNN. They've got a man pretending to be a woman saying, yeah, in due course, it'll be normal to let us at your kids and start mutilating their genitals to try to create some kind of Frankenstein's monster in the lab. Barack Obama has organized this party into the most grotesque form of mentally unstable and unfit totalitarians that we could have ever imagined. The descent into totalitarianism began under his watch in 2008. This is Barack Obama. This is dreams of my father. This is how bad the Democrats have become. Some Democrats can't communicate and are in a hospital. Some don't even know what gender they are and want to mutilate your children's gender. Some are just compliant robots, but they're all a clear and present danger to our liberty. Morality and ethics are absent from this party. These power-hungry control freaks have absolutely no shame and no decency whatsoever. No self-control. This is what happens when community organizers control election outcomes. They organize away the rule of law. The rule of law no longer applies. They make it illegal to even disagree with them or speak out. We've never been here before as a country, folks. We've never been here before. We've fought fascists and communists over there, but we've never been here fighting them here. We've never been ruled by them here. This thing on Tuesday, tomorrow, whatever it is or will or won't be, the supposed arrest of Trump, it's wag the dog on steroids, the bank failures, Biden's China entanglements, East Palestine, uh, you know, a a gender-confused health secretary, a, a, a mentally incompetent, unfit United States senator. I could go on and on. And then, of course, the two-tiered system of justice, the Chinese spy balloon. This serves multiple fronts, this story of Trump's pending arrest tomorrow. But none of it is, none of it's legitimate. You know that and so do I. The question is, how do we respond to it ultimately? I don't know much about investing. I'm not an investment analyst. I have friends that do it. Maybe you're smart about this sort of thing. But I know this, 
last year was the stock market's worst year since 2008. Inflation is a real hamstring on the economy. It's a hamstring to our savings. And if you follow the news, you know that banks are collapsing. I mean, it's the Fed keeps raising interest rates. It's, to put it mildly, a very unsettling time. This administration is addicted to spending. They're turning a blind eye to the ramifications of all this massive spending. Uh, I just don't want you to lose more value in your savings than you've already lost. Hedge inflation right now by turning to the folks at Birch Gold Group. And I'm not asking you to buy gold. I don't know anything about it, okay? But they do. Birch Gold is the foremost authority on precious metal IRAs. So they'll help you convert your existing IRA or 401k into an IRA in gold. The best part, it's tax sheltered, which is awesome. So if you text Chris to 989898, all I ask you to do is do that, and they will send you a free investment kit. They're not asking me to talk you into buying anything. What they want to do and what they've asked me to do is tell people to text us your name and we will send them a free gold kit. All right. So text my name, Chris, to 989898 and receive that free info kit on diversifying with gold. With an A-plus rating from the Better Business Bureau, thousands of satisfied customers, you can trust Birch Gold to protect your savings. Text Chris to 989898 and claim that free info kit on gold. What have you got to lose but learn a little something? Pick up on a little information maybe you didn't know before. Again, it's text Chris to 989898. Hope you'll do it today. Chuck Todd over the weekend at Meet the Press paints a rather grim picture of the state of things if, in fact, we still had news media talking to you about real news and the actual state of the problems in this country instead of a made-up, manufactured, phony Trump arrest tomorrow. Uh, the reality is, oddly, what Chuck Todd swerves into for a minute yesterday on Meet the Press. Inflation, of course, has been a big fallout from this shutdown, and it remains stubborn. Government data on Tuesday showed the prices continued to rise in February. The Fed, trying to slow the economy gradually to curb inflation, has been raising rates at one of the fastest rates in decades, pulling back on so-called easy money policies. Supply chain has been slow to recover. The unemployment rate is super low, 3.6 percent. But millions dropped out of the workforce. Labor force participation rate is well off pre-pandemic highs, and we have a labor shortage because of our strict immigration policies in this country. <laughs> Over on Face the Nation, H.R. Puffin stuff. Um, told, um, who's hosting that over there now? Margaret Brennan? I forget. Yeah, she's, yeah, yeah, Margaret, she's back. Yeah, Margaret's back and uh, listen to his assessment of how things are going internationally. The U.S. government admits they know uh, surveillance footage or things used for enhancing targeting of the battlefield is being sold by Chinese companies, but they say no lethal support yet has happened. You're saying you don't believe that? I don't believe that. I think what you're going to see in the coming days and weeks is more and more evidence of Chinese support. Uh, you know, the Ch China doesn't want to get caught doing this, right? Because at the same time as they're helping the Russians murder Ukrainians, they're also saying, hey, China's open for business. And they're trying to appeal, appeal to American and other investors to continue to prop up their statist mercantilist model, even as they commit genocide, even as Xi Jinping, just in the, in, the, in the recent People's Congress last week, he gave really four speeches, essentially preparing the Chinese people for war. I mean, these were jingoistic speeches. He also made it clear that the security economy is, is going to dominate, you know, over the free market economy or the tech sector. And so I, I think it's time for us really to assess the degree to which we have been yeah. over many years underwriting in many ways our own demise, you know, with Look, investments in China and, and really not doing more yeah. to shore up, you know, uh, shore up fragile uh, supply chains. We've yeah. essentially given an authoritarian regime coercive power over our economy. I want to ask much you like now, did with yeah, Russia. OK, uh, so that's H.R. Puffin stuff. The never Trumper that was Trump's, I think, first national security advisor comes from Philadelphia, as a matter of fact. Uh, so you've heard Chuck Todd's assessment of the economy. Pretty grim. You just heard H.R. Puffin stuff there say, I think we're underwriting our own demise by continuing to be in bed with China. 
Then Aaron Burnett over at CNN, number 66, had this to say about the Biden family's financial dealings with China. On a certain level, just as a layperson, you hear this, and it doesn't sound good. Uh, there's a guy whose name is uh, John Robinson Walker. He gets $3 million from a Chinese-based company and proceeds to wire it out to a bunch of people named Biden, one of whom is Hunter Biden. Another one is a company that belongs to the president's brother, James Biden, and another amount of money to Bo Biden's uh, widow, Hallie. So, again, from a layperson, that doesn't look good. And to a professional person, it looks good? What do what you... To a lay person, it doesn't look. Is Aaron, is Aaron saying she's so sophisticated she understands why this is fine? Or is she saying it genuinely doesn't look good? Of course it doesn't look good. But isn't it interesting? McMaster says we're underwriting our own demise. thought that was an interesting choice of words, meaning we're doing a lot of business with China. We're helping China along as they saber rattle and enable Russia to continue to encroach on Ukraine and cause us trouble ensnaring us in this quagmire there that's probably going to be endless. China is jingoistic. They are angling and amping up for war and combat. And we, McMaster says, appropriately, are funding them. Burnett, over there on CNN, admits, you know, the layperson, the Bidens on the take from China doesn't look very good. Right, Aaron? To the layperson, to the professional person, to... Anybody who's honest, it doesn't look good. We have a president that's on the, on the take from the Chinese. His entire family has enriched themselves courtesy of the Chinese government. A spy, a freaking Chinese spy balloon flew over the country surveilling us for eight days. Uninterrupted. We have a president who is clearly compromised by a Chinese government that is clearly on the march. But Trump paid off Stormy Daniels a few years ago. You see? And then there's just kind of the state of things. Gen- I, I love this story about the CNN crew doing a report in San Francisco. CNN senior national correspondent Kyung La and senior producer robbed in San Francisco while working on a story about rampant street crime. La said she and CNN's Jason Craverick were inside City Hall when thieves smashed their way into a car, being watched by security guards, and made off with items including her passport. According to La, who posted a photo of her smashed rear window, the thieves were gone in under four seconds. But seriously, she wrote, this is ridiculous. Security guards hired to watch the CNN team's rental car and equipment reportedly gave chase, but the crooks pulled away in a black infinity with California plates. So CNN actually had security watching their car, and the thieves still broke into it. Four people wounded in a shooting near Temple University's campus. Just on the edge of Temple University's campus, North Philadelphia, early yesterday morning. Or this, during a memorial service for a slain man. Saturday, gunfire opened up at the cemetery in Montgomery County. I mean, I <laughs> we're in a mess. The country is in a cultural collapse. And reformation, by the way. I will say I'm not entirely negative on the direction of the country, there are signs of life and a pulse. And there are a couple that I want to call attention to because I don't want to be all gloom and doom here. I actually think there are a couple of stories that are rather interesting that actually prove that the country is starting to wake up and I think reclaim traditional values. And I look to signs like this. Kelsey Grammer's movie, Jesus Revolution, which no, I have not seen. Some of you asked about this over the weekend on social media when I commented on it. I've not seen it. I hear it's excellent. Faith-based film, Jesus Revolution, continuing to have success at the box office. Lionsgate, the film company that's uh, produced it. This is their highest grossing film since January 2019. The film starring Kelsey Grammer and The Chosen's Jonathan Rumi have surpassed $40 million in sales at the box office since it opened late last month. It earned third place at the box office its opening weekend, 
far exceeding expectations with 15 million in ticket sales. This film is Lionsgate's most successful post-pandemic film after many movie theaters temporarily shut down. The numbers are incredible, especially coming out of a pandemic, says the producer. The film centers around Pastor Greg Laurie as he meets a hippie street preacher named Lonnie Frisbee, portrayed by uh, Rorney, who uh, eventually connects with Grammer's character, Pastor Chuck Smith. The recently the recent popularity of faith-based entertainment like Jesus Revolution show audiences are hungering for film messages grounded in faith. He believes there was a divine hand on how and when this film came to be. I think that's true. I think you are starting to see an explosive growth in Christian education. Much like you're seeing an explosive growth in Christian-themed films. And I, again, I, I'll just say moral films, entertainment films, family-friendly films, whatever you want to call that. Um, there's something to that. That's something to keep a sharp eye on. That is a trend that's very, very positive, And it speaks to where the country is. And then there was this. I, I came across this over the weekend at Fox News, and I thought it kind of funny. Trad wives. Trad, T-R-A-D, trad wives. You ever heard that term before? Trad, root word, traditional. Traditional wives. This is a real story, and it's a rather lengthy story. And it's a story, if you can believe it, of people in support of and in opposition of women embracing traditional motherhood and being traditional wives and mothers. It's it's a lengthy, like a 10-page printed story about how there's this new and growing trend of you women out there valuing staying home, caring for children and the home and your man. And naturally, how rotten and disgusting and backwards so much of the culture thinks that is. Women who choose to stay at home to care for their families and households are hardly unique to American society, writes Fox, but social media users today appear fascinated with trad wives, that's short for traditional wives, and the lifestyle content they're creating for others. The fascination has shown itself largely through negative commentary. You know, all the, I don't know if you're an Instagram user or not, but if you watch a lot of these... Um, and I, I, I'm just kind of interested in home improvement stuff. I, I like watching people do projects to, hey, we turned our dumpy bathroom into this thing. I think that's always kind of interesting. I think there's some really creative people online. So I spend a lot of time. And you know what I notice? It is a lot of women. It's a lot of self-taught women um, in particular. I mean, men do it, of course, naturally. But it's the women who are making careers out of creating these accounts, showing other women these how-to, do-it-yourself, you know, on a budget, here's how I rehab this, or here's how I made that, or here's a tip to do this. It's, it's actually really inspiring, and these women are building these businesses out of being homemakers and um, remodeling the home and caring for kids. There's often kids in bouncy seats behind them while they're painting or putting up Wayne's coating or whatever. And it's, but that's what it is. These are women that are caring for the home and whatever that means working in the home, caring for children, uh, re renovating, remodeling the home all at the same time. That is, in my view, what a traditional wife would have always... I remember my grandmother. I mean, I remember as a little kid going to stay with my grandparents. My, my grandfather worked for an airline. He was an airline mechanic. Literally, the metal lunch pail and the overalls every day to the machine shop at the airline. And my grandmother was a traditional homemaker, and I remember my grandmother doing all the stuff around the house, not just cooking and cleaning, but literally like, this room needs painting. And so she'd paint the room. Like that, it's not new, but women are now taking social media accounts out and they're making big followings out of doing this, but they are in fact displaying being traditional housewives. And for this, Fox and others are noticing, well, this just seems to be a trend here. What the hell's going on? A bunch of these women seem to be all about celebrating traditional motherhood and traditional housewife stuff. What the hell's that about? The fascination has shown itself through negative commentary. 
Many people have questioned the trad wife philosophy and why any sentiment, uh, any sentient being would adhere to it, said a content specialist from Boston. In an interview with Fox News Digital, many others have deemed the trend alarming, frightening, creepy, a too-good-to-be-true alternative to life, a way to cheat your way out of hard work, a form of anti-worker activity similar to union busting, and a white supremacy concept. Isn't that amazing? Those who practice the treadwife lifestyle are pushing back on the critics, said one treadwife from Virginia. Honestly, I love this lifestyle. I feel like I always wanted it. So what is a traditional wife? It's a newly coined term, this trad wife. It's a subculture of housewives who believe in clear gender roles, the importance of homemaking, and a patriarchal marriage. Trad wives are women who honor femininity, care for their husbands, children, and family, and value the state of their home more than they do a salary, yet are not subservient. Though a traditional housewife may submit to her husband, she is not considered of lesser importance to him or allows herself to be in a position that threatens her right. A traditional woman's place is not under a man's feet, but under his wing by his side. This is from Fox News, folks, so don't get mad at me. This goes on. I mean, it's a 10-page printed-out story. Remarkable that this is news. We, you know... I, I was alive during a time where my, my grandparents, who I admire more than any people on planet Earth when they were living, that's exactly what I watched growing up. And what, as a middle-aged man, I, I and my wife have aspired to. That wasn't where my wife used to be. I, I think my wife, if, if she were here with me right now, I think she would say that she went from a place of seeing this as patriarchal and oppressive to today being very much one of these women. Proudly so. And works her butt off. It's a lot of work to care for the home and keep the home running and keep kids' schedules running. And yes, be supportive to me when I'm ticked off or hangry or a basket case or tired or whatever I am. It's a lot of work. I'd say it's the hardest job in the house, as a matter of fact. And my wife's happy to have it. She's happy to do it. And we're fortunate and blessed that she can. I know a lot of people say, well, economically, I just can't do that. I respect that. But here's what I'd also say. For those of you with children who say private school's too expensive or whatever, you know what a lot of what mothers are doing? They're saying, well, um, we can both be working two jobs, and I don't like the school my kid's in, but we can't afford a private school. Okay, how about this? If you're really serious, you stay home and homeschool your child. Win-win. No, you're not earning a salary anymore, but you're also not paying for a private school if, in fact, you're concerned about your kid's public school education. It is an alternative. I mean, nothing's without sacrifice, of course, unless you're independently wealthy or rolling in dough. But my point is culture is returning. Churches, traditional Bible-based churches are starting to grow, and you can see it. You can see it in the parking lots. I can see it in mine. The explosion of people who are gravitating toward truth-telling from the pulpit, the explosion of people turning to films like Jesus Revolution and, and other uh, Christian-based programming or faith-based programming, this story about women turning to traditional roles, this there is a revolution, a reformation happening. I believe it. I think COVID exacerbated it. You know, the, the fact that we see the country crumbling around us, and we all know we're dealing with a crumbling culture and country, and a highly corrupt president, and a highly corrupt presidential family, and a two-tiered system of justice, and that the leading Republican voice is, in theory, going to be arrested tomorrow, we all know instinctively there's something terribly wrong. The country has been hijacked. There's something really bad going on. And in fact... A gentleman yesterday on uh, Instagram posted something that I thought was just so great, a quote from John Calvin. As a Christian, anyway, it applied to me. John Calvin was quoted as saying once, they who rule unjustly and incompetently have been raised up by him to punish the wickedness of the people. That's a Calvin quote. 
They who rule unjustly and incompetently have been raised up by him to punish the wickedness of the people. I, I don't doubt that's true. I think sometimes there's great justice in injustice. I think that the American people who still actually cling to liberty and freedom and peace and uh, want a, uh, their own personal prosperity, they want to be left alone, they believe in the pursuit of happiness, they believe in the founding values, uh, I think that a lot of this country has woken up to the idea, holy crap, we have really rested on our laurels. And we've lost our communities. And we've lost our culture. And they're starting to think back to a time like my grandparents come from. You know, people that were born in the 20s and led a different life. And people are starting to say, I want that back. Can we create that? Can we get that back? It's going to take a lot of work. It's going to take a lot of work. Millions of people in this country instinctively know there's something terribly wrong. It's bigger than who's holding the presidency, by the way. The presidency is a symptom of it. It's not the cause. It's been my pleasure and honor to talk about Bob Spinato at Williamsburg Dental in Broomall, just off the Blue Route, as my dentist and friend of over 12 years now. But now he has two brand new associates, his daughter Alexa and Dr. Geddes. Tell him about him, Bob. Yeah, it's really a thrill for me to have both the dentists, my daughter and Dr. Jared Geddes. One of the things that I love about them both is they, when they don't have a patient in their chair, they're in my room watching what I do and trying to learn from me. And we hear enough about the new generation and they think they know everything and they don't want to work. And I've got two dentists who are really, really want to learn and really, really willing to work, uh, to work hard. And I enjoy learning from them. They brought some new skills and some new technologies to our office um, that would be great benefits to our patients. And so if anything, I think that uh, having them both there is going to um, expand my and, and lengthen my career as opposed to shorten my career. Pick up the phone or go online, make that appointment, 610-353-2700 or williamsburg-dental.com. He's former acting attorney general of these United States, Matthew Whitaker. He's co-chair of the Center for Law and Justice at the America First Policy Institute. And Matt, we're great to have you back today, sir. Thank you for your time. Good to be with you this morning. Um, hitting you uh, live from uh, from a weight room somewhere. Oh wow! <laughs> I heard you were doing some um, some cable today too. I'm sure everybody's going to be picking your brain on this uh, pending story tomorrow. Yeah, this is the only time I had. Uh, right after your interview, I got about a 15 minute break, and so I'm going to lift a little bit of weight quick, and then get right back and doing all the media. Well, thank you for doing this. I appreciate your time. Um, let, let me just ask you, as a, le as a legal matter, how do you read this? President Trump initially put out on True Social he would be arrested. I, I don't know. Maybe they're walking that back a little bit. I, I, I think the idea that we would see him, you know, like cuffed and walked into a paddy wagon outside of Mar-a-Lago tomorrow, that's not happening, do you think? I hope not. Um, the left, you know, the, the, the loony left, which uh, this prosecutor, Alvin Bragg, up in New York City represents, certainly wants that visual. They want... President Trump fingerprinted. They want him handcuffed. They want him perp walk. They want a mug shot. They want all of that, you know, to use against him to their political favor. Um, ultimately, I don't think uh, it's going to work for them. But uh, you know, there's so many hoops. I was talking about this this morning uh, with Maria Bartiromo on Fox Business, and I think there's so many. This this case is legally and factually so weak that they have to jump through so many hoops that ultimately I'm not sure that they even care if they get a conviction because all they want is this uh, spectacle on the front end. And, uh, you know, they want uh, Trump's base. They want the people that support the president to uh, lose their minds and do something inopportune. And I, you know, obviously I, we've talked about it before, you know, political violence is never acceptable. Um, but at the same time, you know, Chris, I, I'm worried uh, for the Republic, you know, for almost 250 years, our constitutional system and our separation of powers, both at the federal level and between the federal government and the states has worked, but it's worked oftentimes because good people were in those positions. When you have ideologues wearing uh, their team's jersey doing these jobs, um, and especially as prosecutors, it really perverts um, what our constitutional system is supposed to represent. So if you're a betting man, are they going to, are they going to get a mug shot out of this? I mean, is he going to be, Treated and publicized like a standard arrested, criminal? Yeah, I know. Yeah. Okay. Chris, I mean, if, 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 he, if he's arrested, if they go forward with this prosecution um, and this, you know, this allegation that has 
You know, when I was at the Department of Justice, the Southern District of New York looked at this um, theory on on the campaign finance violation, determined under federal law it's not a campaign finance violation. The Federal Election Commission, the FEC, looked at it, determined it wasn't a campaign bi- finance violation. Um, but they're going to use that uh, alleged violation to substantiate a felony charge. And if they go through with it, then, yeah, they'll, they will do the process that includes fingerprinting and mugshots. And it's going to be, um, you know, it's going to be a sad day in, uh, in American history. I really thought raiding his home was as bad as this was going to get. But I guess this is one step worse. You're right. Uh, that was uh, that was a you know again where we keep crossing these lines that have never happened before, the unprecedented uh, in American history. And at some point in time, uh, you know, the left is trying to yank us um, in a direction that I don't think most Americans want to go. And I, I know we've talked about this as well before, Chris. And I always love coming on your show, but you know, it, it is so obvious to me um, that you know this is part of the left desire to start using the instruments of um, you know the 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 state uh, to take out their enemies to target their enemies to make it so that no one wants to um, get into public service on the you know no conservatives I mean if you're a conservative why would you ever want to jump into this knowing that they will harass you impeach you and do whatever it takes to block you from being successful I mean you know President Trump often says it, and, and I don't disagree that, you know, they're not going after him. They're, he's just standing in the way from, from the left going after all of us. This is deadly serious, and I, I don't want to make light of it, but I, I do see Trump using this as an opportunity. This reminds me of sort of like the Tom DeLay thing of years ago, uh, you know, where he, he will have the, you know, may, maybe Trump should go in, you know, in the complete suit and everything, well coiffed hair and the whole bit, and take a smiling mug shot that is used as a fundraising opportunity. I, I mean, I, that's the only way you can turn this into lemonade, right? I mean, and and he, to, to the extent that his base is ginned up by this, um, it will only embolden and strengthen them. I, this is the thing I say to Republican challengers. If they think this means Trump's support will fall off because of this if it happens, I think they're mistaken. <laughs> I think it only strengthens a lot. I think it does. Um, you know, I mean, obviously, we'll only know this looking backwards. I was with the um, president a week ago today. I flew back and forth to Iowa with him on his uh, newly refurbished plane and was able to just kind of, you know, see him in his natural element. And he seemed, even though this was certainly he knew of its pending, his pendency, he was certainly in a good mood and, and, uh, you know, he's a fighter. He's just not, he's never going to give up. And he, he, he eats this, these, these challenges like an energy bar. Jim, he was at the wrestling tournament. He was at the NCAA wrestling championships this weekend, shaking hands with people in Tulsa. I saw him last week down in Mar-a-Lago at a fundraiser. He was ebullient and friendly and joking and hosting people at the house. I mean, the guy's operating like if he's about to be arrested tomorrow, you sure wouldn't know it. Well, I mean, but he also, I think he, he has a little bit of stoicism that he, you know, just worries about the things that are in his control and he doesn't, you know, worry about the things outside of his control. Yeah. Um, you know, I think he's, he trusts, I mean, I, I, I think we're going to find out whether you can trust the system or not. If, if the system is so stacked against individuals, especially in these major metropolitan areas where they go after political enemies, but they don't, uh, you know, combat violent crime, um, and, you know, make people's lives better in their communities. Uh, you know, this is a this is a brave new world. I'll let you go on this question, and that is the legal ramifications of this. Let's just walk it out. Uh, okay, let's. he's arrested. Uh, probably not going to be convicted. I, I can't imagine. Maybe you disagree with that assessment. But, but short of conviction, he can continue to run and, in theory, even win, right? How long would this legal process play out? And could that play out into a presidency, a second term, if he were to win? Just some what ifs, I'm, I guess I'm asking you. Yeah, and I mean, they, it's, it, there's going to be a lot of twists and turns. Obviously, there's going to be a lot of appeals. Uh, there's going to be a lot of judges and a lot of media coverage. At the end of the day, you know, I think the, the analysis is very simple. Um, you know, I, the, the misdemeanor charge, which really, you know, misdemeanors don't carry a lot of um, penalty in our country. There's usually less than a year, uh, ultimately, that you would serve in jail. Many times it's, you know, days, if not just a fine. 
it's probably if there's going to be a case, you know, a case to be made, that's that's the case. I, I just think this this whole campaign finance violation on which the felony is based, uh, or so I read, is is under the law not a valid theory, and so that case is ultimately going to be kicked by some superior court above the trial court if they even let it go forward. And and you know, at the end of the day, uh, we as as we said at the outset, I think this makes President Trump's support stronger. It, it puts him in a in a position to be the martyr. Uh, to stand uh, for a lot of people that don't feel like they're being heard. And so, um, you know, I, but at the same time, it, it's going to keep me busy for the next several months, oh. if not years. <laughs> yeah, and, but it does not preclude him from running or winning or holding office. True, in the meantime? Not at all. Not at all. There is no bar on any of that. The only, Really, the only thing that can prevent a person from be, being disqualified is a conviction after an impeachment. Uh, and that, obviously, they tried that twice, and it didn't work. <laughs> Matthew Whitaker, thank you for uh, allowing us to interrupt your morning. I appreciate your time, sir. Okay, Mike Lindell at MyPillow.com has the new MyPillow 2.0, which I hope you've heard me talking about. But now, also, the mattress topper is 2.0. What does that mean? Both the MyPillow 2.0 and the mattress topper are covered in this fabric. It's a new fabric technology that helps regulate body temperature throughout the course of the night. So that it keeps you cool. You don't get if you if you run hot at night. This is the perfect product for you. I sleep on the My Pillow 2.0 every night, and it's true. I don't I don't get hot. I don't have to flip it to the cool side of the pillow because it's a fiber, not a finish. It lasts the life of the fabric. This keeps you cool and more comfortable throughout the course of the night. Here's what Mike's prepared to do. If you use my name when you call, go to go to mypillow.com and uh, or, or call them today. Either one. Use Chris Podcast as your promo promo code. Chris Podcast. Number one, that lets them know you listen here. More importantly, it gets you deep discounts, up to 66% on everything. But on the 2.0 products, the MyPillow 2.0, you buy one pillow, you get one free. Just by using my name, Chris Podcast. Chris Podcast as your promo code. Now, on the mattress topper, you think that sounds interesting? They will ship it to you for free. Those are bigger and heavier and a little more money. High quality stuff, but a little more money. So as such, if you use Chris Podcast as your promo code, they will ship it to you for free. How cool is that? Again, everything site wide, you can save up to sixty six percent on, and I would really recommend you shop it because from the slippers to the dog bed to the Giza dream sheets to the towels, the My Pillow products are stellar. And Mike stands behind them with a ten year warranty, a sixty day money back guarantee. Look, it's an investment in a high quality product made in the USA by your fellow Americans. So you know it's a great quality item, and uh, he stands behind it with this guarantee. So you really can't lose. You're going to enjoy the comfort of all these products. Even the coffee is tasty. MyPillow.com, promo code Chris Podcast when you go or call 800-932-5056. The Chris DeGall Show Podcast.